This video is the introduction to solving absolute value inequalities. We're going to start with just some examples uh, to kind of get the sense of what we're looking at when we're talking about absolute value inequalities. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to state three numbers that are solutions to the descriptions that are given here. Uh, the challenge for you is to come up with three numbers where one is positive, one is negative, and one is a non-integer. In case you're not sure what an integer is, an integer is any whole number, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 and it's opposite, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, blah, 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 in that direction. Those would be integers. So non-integers include irrational numbers, and they include fractions and decimals. So let's take a look. Letter A is asking us to find three numbers whose distance between that number and 0 on the number line is greater than 4. Okay, well, what's a number that's further away? So here's 4. What's a number that's further away from 0 than 4? Well, how about 5? So here's one number. I'm going to use 5. Next, we want to find a negative number. So what's a negative number whose distance is greater than 4 from 0? Well, what has a distance of 4 from 0 in the negatives? Negative 4. So if we start here, can I, do I see any numbers that are further than 0 than negative 4? Sure. How about negative 6? Then the challenge is to find a non-integer. Now, my number line only has integers. So the non-integers are the numbers that are in between the integers, such as negative 5 and a half, right? Negative 5 and a half is right here. It's 5 and a half units away from 0, so it would fit the description negative 5.5. How would we write this algebraically or as an inequality? Well, let's see. So first of all, what we might know over here is that the number has to be bigger than 4. Right, I chose 5, you could have also chosen 6 or 7 or even numbers that aren't on the number line 8, 9, 10, blah, blah, blah. But that's not it. There are, there's a whole other set of numbers that are uh, further than uh, 4 from 0 on a number line. And it's these numbers over here where x is less than negative 4. So how do we write these two things as one single inequality? That's when absolute value comes, into, uh, comes in handy. We can say the absolute value of the number has to be bigger than 4. That way, if you plug in any of these numbers, you'll see that each of them have an absolute value that's greater than 4. Just to finish this graph, because I kind of started it, although it looks a little wonky, we could, we could say, okay, well, all of the numbers that are bigger than 4, we know how to do this, we've done this before, that would be an open circle over 4 with an arrow going to the right. Where are the numbers that are less than negative 4? That would be an open circle with the arrows going, uh, arrow going to the left. So this is how we could graphically represent this. These are the numbers that are further away from 0 than 4, uh, fur further than 4 from 0. This is how we could write it as an inequality, that the absolute value has to be bigger than 4 if it's further away. And these are just some examples. Looking at letter B, the distance between a number and 0 and a number line is greater than or equal to 4. This one's pretty similar. The only difference here is that we added the two words, or equal to. Well, actually just, no, three words, that's three words, or equal to. So how is this one different? Well, in this case, we would actually include 4 and negative 4. So those would now both be solutions. And then if I want one non-integer, I could say, um, how about 7.2? 7.2 is further away from 0 than 4 is. On the number line, so greater than or equal to 4, that would be like x is greater than or equal to 4. That would be a closed circle with an arrow going to the right. Or alternatively, other things that are more than 4 away would be numbers that are less than or equal to negative 4. So that would be a closed circle over negative 4 with the arrow going to the left. I wrote two separate inequalities, but ideally we want to write one single inequality. We could say the absolute value of any of the solutions has to be greater than or equal to 4. We're going to continue the introduction to absolute value inequalities by looking at these examples. So what we're looking for is we're going to state three numbers uh, that are solutions to the descriptions that are provided here. And the challenge is to find one positive number, one negative number, and one non-integer. So in letter C, the distance between a number and 0 on the number line is less than 5. So where are numbers that are less than, uh, less than 5 units away from 0 on a number line? Well, here's a number line here. Uh, so any numbers that it looks like in between here and here would be closer to 0 than uh, 5 
uh, five units. So let's pick numbers in here. For example, we could say two. Two is closer to zero on the number line than five is. That's my positive number. A negative number could be negative three. So we have this number here. I'll just put a little x there, put a little x here. Um, and then I need one non-integer. So how about negative 0.5, which would be right here. Those are just three of the numbers, but are those the only three numbers? Well, no, there are a lot of numbers. In fact, an infinite number of numbers that are uh, closer than five to zero on a number, closer to zero than five on a number line. Um, if we look at this, so if we start at negative five, negative five is not less than five units. So we would use an open circle to say, nope, we can't include negative five, but we want the numbers that are right next to it. On the other side, we can't go over five, and five is not included because it is not closer to zero than itself. But it would be everything in between these. So it would be all of these would be solutions to this particular example. So I chose three of them, but as I mentioned, there are infinitely many. How would we represent this algebraically? Well, first of all, one thing we know is that it has to be less than 5. So we can say x is less than 5. But that's not it, because if it was x is less than 5, that would just be a single ray going towards the left. Um, but there is a stopping point. So not only does x have to be less than 5, x also must be greater than negative 5. x is greater than negative 5. So if you look at all the numbers in here, all of those numbers are both less than 5 and greater than negative 5. The, these three included. Well, that's nice, but we want to represent it with one single inequality. The way we can do that is we say the absolute value of x has to be less than 5. And if you, again, check these three numbers, or if you came up with three numbers, they should all have an absolute value that's less than 5. And that's how we can describe it in one inequality. Next, letter D, the distance between a number and 0 on a number line is less than or equal to 5. So this one's pretty similar, but how, first of all, let's just start with the graph. How is the graph different? Well, we have the or equal to. That means that 5 is included. So 5 would be one solution, which I'll represent with a dot. And then also negative 5 would be included because it's 5 units away from 0. And then we're all the numbers that are less than a distance of 5 from 0. Well, that would be in between negative 5 and 5. So some examples here, we might just use what I just said, 5 negative 5, and then we could get fancy and say pi, because pi is approximately 3.14, so it's going to be like right here, sort of, um, which is closer to 0 than 5 itself. So how do we describe these numbers? Well, they have to be greater than or equal to 5, but also they need to be, I'm sorry, they need to be less than or equal to 5, right? Yeah, less than. Um, but they also have to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So those are the two things we want to consider if we're going to write that as one single inequality. Let me get out of the graph, the way of the graph. We can say the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5. So any number in between here and here should have an absolute value that is less than or equal to 5.